All right. How many people here are actively advertising on YouTube? Just one? Two? Three? Four, five. Excellent. How's your results been? Just started? Okay. One of the takeaways you can get from this weekend is that if you're not doing YouTube, it is something that you should seriously look at, okay? Because I'm just going to run down some staggering numbers that YouTube gets um, on a regular basis. The first thing is, is that they get 1 billion unique visitors each month. 1 billion unique visitors each month. Okay, meaning that one out of every person on the planet is visiting YouTube at least once a month. 70% of YouTube traffic comes from outside the USA. From out, so there's a huge, huge reach even outside the USA. Mobile makes up 25% of all YouTube views. So people are viewing YouTube on their cell phones, YouTube on their tablets. The most shocking thing is that almost 80% of YouTube video inventory goes unsold every single day. Okay? There's a gold mine to be tapped into. And YouTube is broadcast in 54 different languages. Okay? <clears throat> so why YouTube? Well, it's the second largest search engine behind Google, okay? Another statistic came out that when you guys are looking to buy something, zeroing in on a particular product, where do you guys go if you want to get more information on that product? Everybody thought Amazon at one point. Amazon would get you the, the reviews that you need. More people are going to YouTube for reviews than they are to Amazon. So for, the, for those of you who might even be in the, the, the ASM course, that's something to think about. Especially if it's a how-to. Yeah, especially if it's a, if it's a how-to, for example, um, screen protectors. Paul's, Paul Sinclair's screen protectors. Here's how easily it is to put on. Here's how easily it is to peel off. And right in the description, you can link directly to your Amazon checkout page or your, your listing, your Amazon listing page. Videos are very, very powerful. I don't do much stuff on Amazon, but my understanding is on Amazon, all you have is an image to work with. You can't put videos on Amazon in your listing. As long as, at least, I don't know, does it, can you do that? Reviews. Only reviewers, but not product owners, right? So how-to videos on YouTube can be extremely powerful if you're doing e-commerce or you're selling physical products. The inventory on YouTube is much cheaper as compared to the AdWords platform. And like I said, you can create better engagement with your prospect using videos, hands down. Okay, that's why you see everybody in the internet marketing world switching to virtual sales letter. You see them selling on webinars because videos engage people better. Okay, so what do you need to get started advertising on YouTube? Well, you need a Google AdWords account because everything is linked from your AdWords account. More of a reason to go out there and get a new Google AdWords account if you've been banned because now you have the power of tapping into YouTube. You need to have a YouTube channel because that's where you're going to upload the videos that you're going to be advertising on YouTube. And third, you need to have great marketing videos. So here, here's, the, here's the big dilemma. And, and be honest here, who, who is camera shy and can't imagine putting themselves behind a camera on YouTube. Put up your hand. Yeah. So you don't necessarily have to. I mean, it is very easy now to go out there and get videos created for you 
by simply outsourcing it to um, people, uh, people on, uh, on Fiverr who will do really weird things for five bucks. There was one guy I found who would sing happy birthday, I think in his underwear in the jungle, for you for five bucks. In Welsh? In Welsh? <laughs> Probably. There are people that will give you testimonials for five bucks. Video testimonials for five bucks. There's a lot of different things that you can do. You don't necessarily have to put yourself behind the camera. You can outsource your videos. You can do PowerPoint presentations. Do PowerPoint presentations. Not comfortable with your voice? Go get a voiceover done by a professional. You can get them done for as little as $5. Doodle videos? We talked about this. You can go to Fiverr. You can go to Elance. Once again, you can get doodle videos created for you. And most of the time, some of these guys are so good, you just need to just give them the script. And they'll be able to create the doodle video based on the script and actually do the voiceover for you. There are tons of Fiverr gigs for only $5. You can see here, I will make a video to promote your business in YouTube, five bucks. I will make a promotional video, five bucks. I will make a video of social media contacts, one killer minute video. I will record a hundred word professional female voiceover. I will make a De Niro video. This guy looks like Robert De Niro. And for five bucks, for five bucks, he will create a video for you. And just to kind of show you some of the talent out there. Hey, hey, hey there, Don Wilson. So if you wanted to create a De Niro video, If you're watching this video, it means you need my help. You need my help, do you? Hmm? Of course you do. I can make your message for your mother, for your father, for your boss, for your girlfriend, and say whatever you want in every language, okay? Italiano, Spanish, English, whatever. Okay? That's fine. So remember, send me your script, and I will make a video between five and 30 seconds. He's got 263 buyers, great review. He's backed with orders. Okay, there's people like this. There's people like this out there. Okay, when it comes to voiceovers, there's tons of people who will do voiceovers for you. Like, I don't know, but if you guys watched the product launch for Mike Fosame and Andy Jenkins' um, video Genesis, I know for a fact that was not Morgan Freeman in the voiceover, but it sure as heck sounded like Morgan Freeman because he's got a very unique voice, okay? All of these guys for $5 will do voiceovers for you. So if you don't feel comfortable doing a voiceover, you can find people who will do even weird things. Send you pics of weird ocean creatures. Text someone weird messages all day. I mean, you'll get... <laughs> weirdly, weirdly market your product bird plane helicopter. And some of the stuff that, you know, we've tested some really weird stuff. Let me find that. See if I can find it. Because you don't know what will stick. You don't know what will stick. Because did you know you can get radio ads on Fiverr for five bucks? You can get 30 second radio spots for five bucks. USA. 
No, what you do is you go on Fiverr to get a pro to make it for five bucks, and then you go to the radio station and give them the pro's $5 recording to advertise for five bucks. So we try to do this with paper call. Okay, so I'll show you some of the examples of the weird things that we, we, we did. And you'll be really surprised. Do you guys want to hear those, some of the stuff that, you know, is really compelling marketing? No, it didn't work because uh, we didn't let the experiment run long enough and I don't think we were hitting the right demographic with these radio stations. Uh, and we couldn't verify that for sure that they were running our stuff, so that was a bit difficult. But we, I don't think we tested it long enough. Your bills are stacked high. You're under the crunch. You feel up against the wall. So where do you turn? There is a solution. Debt consolidation. Just one simple call today makes bad debt go away. Call toll free 1-877-578-3356. 1-877-578. $5. That would cost you like $500. Are you having problems paying the mortgage, the car payment, credit cards, and all your other bills? You're not alone because times are tough. But don't let bad debt ruin another good day. Call toll free 1-877-578. Try it over and over. Hello, this is a bill collection call and you're late on your payments again this month. Stop. Never receive a bill collection call like that again. Are you struggling in debt, drowning in payments with bill collectors hounding you? Just one simple call. That was our Hollywood version. Okay. We were doing a lot of testing with with uh, with different things um, even to a point some of the testing got a little bit ridiculous because um, you don't know yeah we ran all of them but you don't know what's going to work and what's not going to work hold on let me, let me see if I can find it fiber five bucks five dollars no we wrote the script but I'm sure you could pay somebody five bucks to write the script Let me show you this one. But that's what I'm saying is that you take the power of, 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 of Fiverr and, and you get somebody to do something for five bucks. It's amazing. I've had a rough year with bills stacked high and bill collectors were the only ones calling me to say hi. But guess what? Today I'm celebrating and I want to sing everyone my song. I'm happy dad has gone away. So happy dad has gone today. I'm so freaking happy that dad has went away. We tried everything, okay? <laughs> we, we, we tried everything because you don't know what will work and what won't work. Like I said, radio spots. This guy will write your 30 second video spot. This guy will voice it over. And then I will spotlight if you're an aspiring singer, your song on a New York radio station. Uh, let me see here, maybe, oh, I put radio spots. I put radio station. I'll give you an online radio station. I've got this many listeners. Um, I will air your commercial on my radio station. I will advertise on 1047 FM radio station for one day. Five bucks. Five bucks. So, you know, when the event is over and you start hearing Garcinia Cambogia commercials on your radio, you'll know why. <laughs> but you guys see the power? You don't have to do it yourself. There's people out there that'll do anything for you for five bucks. There's also Sixer, Sevener, and Aider.com. <laughs> I'm serious, I'm serious. Where people will do stuff for $6, $7, and $8, and I'm sure there's a 10 or 11 or and a 12 or and, and so on, okay? What we actually did was we actually outsourced on um, on, uh, on Fiverr, um, our, our, uh, our, our uh, not here message on our uh, call center. 
So, you know, so-and-so calls, I'm sorry, we, you know, the company that we were, uh, so-and-so company is uh, closed right now, but if you care to leave, and it's so much better, so much better with a nice, pleasant voice than, you know, hey, this is Gorch Audrey, I promote media, nobody here right now, leave a message, see ya. You know, it's so much better and so much more professional. Like I said, you guys have all the tools to look like a Coca-Cola online. All the tools to look like a Coca-Cola online. You know how we talked about transcribing doodle videos or sales videos? You can get people to do it for five bucks. Five bucks. I will transcribe 20 minutes of audio for five bucks. So, you know, when it comes to getting all the resources together, as far as marketing is concerned, you don't need a whole entire marketing team. Everything can be outsourced on Fiverr. <clears throat> okay, there's, there's three things you gotta remember about the, uh, the, on YouTube advertising, okay? There's essentially three networks where YouTube displays their videos, okay? There's YouTube search, when people go to YouTube and they search for um, how to fix my clogged sink, okay? Then there's YouTube videos. When you end up going to a video about how to unclog your sink, and on the right-hand side, you see all the videos. And then there's the Google Display Network, where Google will display video ads on some AdSense sites that have been set up to take video ads. With that being said, there's two types of ad formats. Okay, two types of ad formats. There are the in-stream ads, and these are the ads that when you're looking to watch a video, you're forced to watch an advertisement. I'm almost certain everybody has seen those, where you have to watch uh, at first, at least the first five seconds before you have the ability to skip the video and continue watching what you wanna watch, okay? So the thing that you gotta keep in mind for in-stream video is that you are, you're interrupting the person's video. I know that anytime we've gone to a video, all of a sudden you sit there and you're like, oh my gosh, I gotta sit through this. And you wait until it goes and, and you skip it. So with that being said, when you're doing any sort of in-stream advertising, you know, marketing is no different really in reality. It, it, it all depends on how you do it. You wanna make sure that you capture their attention especially within the first five seconds, because they're forced to watch your video for at least five seconds. The funniest thing that I see all the time, and this is done by all the major corporations, is for the first five seconds, and it's like you want to knock them on the head, they display their stupid logo. Like, how dumb is that? You got five seconds to get right in front of your prospect, and you're just showing your logo. What you want to do is, you want to call out to your prospect in the video. You want to call out to the prospect in your video. You know, I don't know how far you can take it with YouTube or Google. Um, I wouldn't go as far as insulting your prospect uh, in your first five seconds by saying, you know, uh, hey, fatso, you know, yeah, I'm talking to you. And, you know, I have somebody on Fiverr point out, hey, yeah, yeah, you, you, come over here a little bit closer. I don't think AdWords would do that, but you guys get the concept. You guys understand that it's about calling out the prospect, okay? You know, it could be as simple as somebody saying, you know, are you currently going through a messy divorce? Then all of a sudden the person who's watching the video is like, hey, wait a minute, that's me. They've called out to me. Now you've captured their attention and they're more prone to not skipping your ad, okay? Yes, Michael. How about pricing for YouTube and other pricing to watch more videos? Yeah, I'll talk about that. <clears throat> then there's your in-display ads. 
And like I said, that ad format is the ads that are going to appear in the search results on YouTube. And they're the ads that are going to appear on the right hand side of a video that you're, you're watching. Okay. What you want to do is when you're creating your campaigns on YouTube, you want to make sure that you split your campaigns by the specific targeting. So you have your in search, you have your in display, and you have your in stream. Okay. We talked about in searches when somebody's specifically looking for a solution to their problem, they type in a keyword, heartburn, all of a sudden guess whose video shows up? Your video on heartburn. Okay. In display, somebody's watching a video on heartburn and you can actually do placement targeting in YouTube and target specific videos and have your video appear on the side. Okay. And then I said in stream is getting right into your competitors videos before they even watch your competitors video and they have to watch your, uh, your marketing message. They have to be linked. They have to be linked. Yes. Because what happens is when you go from your, uh, your, your, your AdWords campaigns to your YouTube campaigns, that's all linked into the same email address and the same, uh, the same channel. In search ads. This is probably the most targeted because we talked about YouTube is the second largest search engine behind Google. They get more searches than Bing. They get more searches than Yahoo. So why wouldn't you be want to be on YouTube? Basically, it works in the same manner as Google search, as the Google search networks, uh, where paid ad results appear before the natural search results. Okay. <clears throat> it's almost identical. <clears throat> so I looked under the keywords stock trading. You can see here, this is an ad. <clears throat> this is an ad. Not sure why this guy is bidding on stock trading and he's advertising a free website. <clears throat> then you get the natural search results below it. Okay. This guy looks to be a new advertiser. He's only got 695 views. This guy looks like he's been around here for a while. He's got 96,000 views. Okay. <clears throat> Most of these times when you see some of these videos, a lot of these how to videos or fitness videos, they got 10, 15 million views and you're figuring out how do they get that many views? Chances are very good that they paid for it that they paid for it. Okay. Yes. Do you know if these ads here are going to a sales message? Like, is it a pre-sell to a video sales letter? No. Um, this is trying to get clicks for their channel here. I'm always trying to figure out the purpose of these. Are you just trying to build up your subscriber base on your channel with these ads? I'm glad you brought that up. Because these are very, highly targeted keywords. When you do a search campaign on YouTube or you do an in display campaign on YouTube, you're not linking to a URL. You're linking to a specific video. Okay. So when you're doing in search or you're doing in display, you're basically promoting the video. Whereas with in stream, because you're being played in a video, when they click on it, it's going to go to a URL that you give YouTube, which is could go to your sales letter. Okay. That's the glaring difference in display and in search. You're promoting the video. You're not putting no URL anywhere in the ad in stream. You are putting a URL with that being said, I'll cover how, even though you're sending them to a video, you can still send them to your sales letter. Okay. You think there's, um, I guess, um, I'm trying to figure out if this would be, I guess it just comes down to finding the most highly 
the, the keywords that convert the most. Should I come up? You know, yeah, I, I can barely hear you, and I'd love to get this in the feed. Otherwise, I'll miss it in the feed. Thanks. So my question is, is here's what I was thinking of doing this for myself. So I want to find out which keywords of mine actually make money. Yes. And then promote those videos here. And then you're just going to basically, is it achieving two goals? So goal number one, you're getting views to that video plus maybe some subscribers. Yeah. Plus, if the video was relevant, they may click the link in the video that was also relevant to the keyword. Is this kind of, is that what we're basically doing here? Well, I mean, there's different objectives that you could be using a search campaign or an in-display campaign for. Some people only care about building their subscriber base on YouTube. Okay, for example, um, there's some popular people on, on YouTube that want to build their subscriber count like... Um, I forgot some names. There's one girl called Superwoman. Um, one, uh, one other girl in China, I forgot what her name was. And their whole purpose, Vince, is to build their subscriber base. Why? Because if they can build their subscriber base big enough and get enough video views, Google will approach them about a monetization deal. So that's their only ob objective. They're not direct response marketers. They're people who just want to be celebrities. What, what's a monetization deal where they put more the, you know, Google AdSense ad, will yeah their they, ads on their channel so yeah they because make more AdSense yeah because you can go into your channel and you can shut off any monetization you can tell Google I don't want ads to be shown okay, so. on my video so if you got that off and Google can come back to you and they can say well you know why don't you turn that back on and we'll cut you a better revenue deal okay or if you're getting a huge subscriber base and you're getting a lot of videos Google will encourage you to create more content because now you're popular, now you're relevant. The more content you create, if you've got a base of 2 million viewers, that's more advertising for Google now, more possible advertising. So they work with content creators to get that. So that is an objective of some people who only care about in display ads or in search ads. Are you familiar with um, Jeff Johnson's Tube Traffic Secrets course where he teaches how to get one penny clicks? And the main thing is, is every video you put out, you know, you're basically going, you're setting your bid prices to like a penny to 10 cents and you're just trying to get any inventory at those cheap clicks to get views to your channel. Um, so it's kind of like, you know, more views, the more subscribers you get and then the channel starts to grow. So um, do you have any tips on doing AdWords to just grow your subscriber base? Are you uh, talking just, about YouTube yeah, or YouTube. AdWords? So if I, yeah, if I want to grow my... I want to grow my YouTube subscriber base with the current videos I'm putting out. Would you just start marketing them? If on, my on whole objective was to, cre was to uh, build my subscriber base, my goal would be to create real compelling videos that people are going to want to subscribe to your channel for. Okay. So, so if, you're, okay. if you're creating a video on the truth behind big biceps and you're dispelling myths and you're providing value and truth, people are going to naturally be, naturally be inclined to start following you anyways, okay? But if you post information on, you know, you're standing in front of the mirror and saying, oh, look at me, look at me, and just flexing and saying, ah, and all that stuff, right? People are going to, they're not going to subscribe to your channel. They're going to say, this guy's a waste of time. So okay. it all depends on the, you know, the, the content you create. Okay, good stuff. Okay. Thank you. Corin. You know what, let me grab you a mic so everybody can hear. Does the same rules apply Google search to YouTube videos? When you say same rules, the quality what do you mean? control, or you know what, what we can, where we can link. Um, no, it's not as rigid, rigid as AdWords, but they do review your video. They will look at your video. Um, but it's very hard to have the same type of quality score because it's a lot of different variables. There's no keywords in, really in the, the video or anything like that to assess relevancy or things like that. The big difference is that with um, YouTube, you're not paying per click. 
you're paying per view. So when you set your bid price, you're setting a bid to have somebody watch your ad. There's no pay per click. It's paper. It's a pay uh, a cost per view. Did that answer your question, or? So if we put our link there, you I can't. Mean, okay. You can't. There's no link. Well, sometimes you, you know, like you look at this. You you see a link? There's no link. There's, there's absolutely no link. Sometimes a caption pops up, you know, and it's, uh, In the video. Yeah, in the video. Yeah, that's a different story now. Okay. okay, that's a different story. That's when, as a direct response marketer, you start implementing that in the video to capture the prospects off of YouTube and into your funnel, okay? No. No, because you're charged on a per view basis, but they will, no. They don't, they don't look at that from what I can see. They count clicks. But from what I remember in setting up my campaign, at no point did they ask me to put a CPC for anything. It was always... Well, you set up the URL, so I don't know if they count it as a click. If they do, I don't see it anywhere in my reporting. The only time you will see clicks are when people have clicked from your in-stream ads. They will track that for you, but even then you're still charged on the view, not the click, okay? That measurement is just to tell you, a thousand people watched your video and only 10 people clicked on it, you have an issue. Yeah. Yes? You can take uh, the stock trade video, find the top stock trade video. Yes. In display. Yes. That is, that is their, um, that's slightly different. There's a name for that type of advertising that unfortunately I'm not covering today. What John is talking about is the actual banner advertising. The 300 by 250, 760 by 80, that works really well. I don't know, I don't think you do that in the YouTube, chan uh, YouTube platform. I think you do that on the AdWords platform targeting YouTube, setting it up. But that's a good point. Yeah, you're not only restricted to video ads, you can actually have your banners appear beside the videos, like John said, uh, right beside your competitor's video and, um, and get traffic that way. That can work very well. No, good point, John. I think it's called in review ads, I think, in review. Yeah. When you go to YouTube, you might have noticed that when you're watching a video, you see actually a 300 by 250 banner. John, sorry, what was the other side? Size? I think it's 760 by 80. Yeah, the overlay. It's called the bottom overlay video. You see that and you got to click that out. You can actually do that from your AdWords account. Okay? Those can work very, very powerfully too. Okay? It's tricky, but those ads you get charged on a CPC basis, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And uh, for target Just getting the visibility out there and the branding out there. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, oh, that's smart. It's very smart. Okay. Lowell. Are you familiar with uh, Inspire stuff that you can search out writers and what they do it for? There is not a spy tool that I'm aware of for YouTube, but I'm sure you just gave 59 other people a great idea. Okay, just one other question. With PDP, can you target a YouTube you know, channel yes. or a specific video? Yes, you can. I actually have a specific ad group set up for YouTube videos. It seems like they have like a URL spin or something and they check out a video a couple times with the, the deep URL spin. So. It happens, but we're still able to get it. We're, well, I know we can get, view. it's not a whole lot, I'm being honest with you. Because once again, there's, what's the chances of the person who's watching that particular YouTube video that you want to advertise for that has adware installed on their computer? Just that whole game again. In display ads, these are the ones that appear alongside other YouTube videos or on the Google display network, okay? These appear based on the targeting parameters that you have set. 
YouTube gives you a lot of different targeting parameters. You can do it by category, you can do it by topic, you can do it by gender, you can do it by the person's age. You can really zero in on the person. And sometimes, and, and how the targeting and the category targeting on YouTube works is kind of the, the, the premise of, if you liked this, you will also love this type thing, okay? So here's an example of an in-display ad. And this guy is everywhere. Mike Chang, who has, put up your hand if you haven't seen Mike Chang's ads on YouTube. Okay, so majority of the room, this guy, if you see some of, you know, I went to YouTube just a couple of minutes ago to uh, test out the audio, and then Mike Chang appeared all of a sudden again. <laughs> all over the place, he's here, okay? And it's Mike Chang ad, and it's 130,000 views, 6 million views, 5 million views. He has built an eight-figure empire from YouTube advertising. Yeah, I don't know. Vince knows him, I'm sure. Is it true that trainers despise him? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Why would they despise him? What do you mean? That's, that's his comment. Uh, that's his hook? Why trainers despise me? Oh. Yeah. Negative. Like, like, I mean, he is doing such heavy advertising. I can guarantee you that if I go to YouTube, I will see him within the first 10 seconds. Okay, all right. Hello, Mike Chang. Girl, her, they use, uh, they use retargeting. Uh, Mike, oh, they do retargeting too, eh? Yeah. I attended my uh, mastermind last year, and um, I had him and his uh, the AdWords expert do a presentation for an hour, and uh, they're just very, very aggressive. Uh, for the first year or two, they just put everything they made back into the company, so they created a huge, they created a, you know, a big brand, a big chain. You know, you know, Vince, that's good stuff. Do you mind if I catch that on the feed? Yeah. And, and this is kind of the, the, the premise, and I think this is where Vince is, is, is going, that, yeah, if, if you, guys who are serious about building empires, they don't care about making money out of the gate. They'll lose money for even up to a year so that they can build an audience and a huge customer base so that one, when they come out with other products, it's very easy to promote those. Yeah, so I was just saying, I know Mike Chang personally. Uh, we've done, we've collaborated together, and Ben knows him as well. And, uh, um, they've got a pretty interesting story, so I don't know the exact length of time, but I know everything they made on YouTube, they put right back into the company. And they're literally sleeping out of their car, and um, they're like living, there's like a bunch of guys living out of closets for a long time to get this thing going. So um, these guys came into it very aggressive, and um, their thing is if you're going to do YouTube, you've got to be all in. Like you can't be wishy-washy on it. Um, so they, you know, they spend a lot. And they've got a very extensive back end, which includes uh, customer phone support. So they're able to um, really make this advertising work. And um, very, very relentless. They also do a lot of retargeting, if you guys have noticed. So um, simple concepts, like nothing complicated. They're just relentless and very aggressive and uh, milking it for all it's worth for as long as they can. So, so is it um, fair to say, Vince, they built their empire off of YouTube, paid ads? That's all they do. I mean, they don't even do affiliate marketing. When they came to my mastermind last year, I said, you guys, you got to start promoting some other people's stuff. So they, didn't even, they weren't even using their massive customer list. They weren't even doing affiliate marketing. Oh, they weren't so even. So they, they were just driving. Like they didn't even have a leads list. It was all it was just a customer's list, just a pure buyer's list. So, um, you know, that's how focused they were on making YouTube work. So, yeah, those numbers you mentioned, yeah, they've, I don't know what they are now, but they've grown a very, very large company. And, um, well, you just have to see if you, you end up clicking on. One um, of the things I learned about you know, when I was talking with Mike, you know, you're just playing it way too safe. Um, you got to be aggressive. You got to be ready to lose some money, but you know, knowing that this is what you're going to do until you make it work. So um, it, it's it's a lot of psychological stuff that goes into being successful online, right? A lot of people are afraid of the risk and you know play it too safe for too long, then they get discouraged. So. Uh, hearing that, it's pretty, you know, especially with this kind of stuff, it's a bit like gambling. You have to wait until you 
don't cards know. start working in your favor and then you just run with it. I can't view because safety mode is on. I don't know what's so. Does that help? That, that does. Good? Okay. That's excellent. Thanks, Vince. All right. We'll have to go to the remote server then. Sorry, I got kids at home. That is probably why at some point I put safety mode on. Yeah.